Okay. Okay. I am back and I think I am live right now. So I'm just going to get started. Hello. I am Angela and I am here to do one of the say seven sayings of Jesus. I was chosen to do this by Elder Belinda Rice. So yeah, we're just going to get started. Um, I was uh, given the first saying, and it is Luke 23. Y'all hold up. I'm a little nervous. Not Luke 23. Okay. It is Luke 23, verse 34. And it says, then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That was the um, saying that I was given. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Um, hopefully most of you all know the story of the cross that Jesus uh, was crucified on Good Friday. And I don't, I, I don't even think or can even imagine in my mind that they knew exactly what that what they were doing, that they really knew that they was killing the son of God. So in, in this first saying, and it's just amazing to me that the first thing that he said on the cross, father, father. Now I don't blocked out all the noise, all the, all everything that it was going on around me, everything that me being beaten and spit on, I don't blocked out all of this. And now I done made a personal plea father sometimes you really got to get intimate with this thing you really got to get intimate with god father that was his first word father it was a personal plea father forgive father forgive it was a personal plea attached to a personal passion thank you jesus a personal passion it doesn't matter what it looks like when you get in your place and in your uh, quiet time and all the chaos that's going around you, you make that personal plea with God, Father, Father. And he said, Father, forgive, forgive. I got so much love attached to this. So forgive, forgive, For forgive them. Father, forgive them, them, the people. I got such a personal passion for the people. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Isn't that like us, though? Isn't that like us? We have no clue of how we are causing so much chaos in this world. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I'm taking, I'm taking this thing personal. It's not about me anymore. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This got to be a personal prayer that you, you, uh, you have to go to God. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. How many times? Did you have to did you have to go to God and say those same words? Father, forgive, for they know not what they do. Yes, we've been we've been we've been talked about. Yes, we've been abused. We we've been ridiculed. We've been persecuted. But it is nothing. It is nothing like what God has been through. It is nothing like what Jesus had died for us. It is nothing, no comparison. We could not even fathom what God, what Jesus went through on that cross. And he had to make a personal declaration saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's not, it's not even about the people that abuse me at this point. It's not even about the people that have mocked me or don't believe me. Now it's between you and I, Father, I'm making this thing an intimate plea with you. Father, I'm making this thing my passion, my love for the people that don't even have a clue of what's going on. 
They don't even have a clue what they've done. They can't even comprehend what they've done. So I'm, I'm speaking on their behalf. Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Who is them? Us. We don't have a clue of what we've done. We don't have a clue of the chaos that we have caused in this world. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We do not have a clue of the chaos whoo, that we don't cause between heaven and earth. We don't have a clue of how we don't distorted things, how we don't shook up this earth. But God is still saying, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. We don't have a clue how ignorant. We don't have a clue of how lost. We don't have a clue of how rebellious. We don't have a clue of how reprobated we've been. And God is still saying, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. We don't have a clue. But the passion, the love for God has for us. No, the first thing that he said, the first thing that came out of his mouth was, Father, forgive. I'm talking to you on, on, on my people's behalf because at this point, we can't even speak for ourselves. Everything that's going on, we don't we can't even speak. God is still interceding for us. Everything that's going on, we, don't, we can't stop it. We don't got a cure for it. We don't know what to do. We don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next. And God is still saying, Father, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. They don't have a clue of what's going on. Ah, they don't have a clue. We so lost. We so self-indulged, so self-conceited, so caught up in our own thing. And God is still saying, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. I plead with you today. Go back to the one. Make this thing personal again. It is a personal relationship, a personal plea. When all everything is going on in the world, we still got to get to a quiet place and block it out. It doesn't matter who, who has hit us, who has been on us, who have talked about us, who have abused us. Still, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. This is intimate now. These weeks, these months that you've been off work, it's, it's time for you to cry out to God. Father, forgive me because I know not what I've done. Father, forgive me. I'm sorry. So we can get this relationship back with heaven and earth. Because God has not left. He's still very much alive. Though we celebrate this resurrection weekend, this, this Passover, we celebrate all of it, but he is still very much alive in our hearts, in our spirits, in our everyday, everything that we see and touch, your family, everything around you, that's God. Every love that you experience, that's God. God has so much compassion for us. He is still giving us chance after chance, warning after warning. Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. I plead with you. I plead with you to get back to a personal relationship with him. Make this thing personal again. A personal plea. Have a personal passion. Have that passion again. So we can we can continue to speak and God can continue to speak on our behalf. And when you get that personal plea and you have that personal prayer life and you make your passion personal, that when you can go out in the world and rock this thing with purpose. I thank uh, Elder Belinda for this opportunity. I hope and pray that something I've said have blessed you. I hope and pray that something I said that you saw, you saw Jesus and not me. So thank you. I hope you have a good day. Bye.